the floor for your finalists this evening, Coffee Chow and Manfred White. Well, good evening, everyone. It is Cup Final time, that Cup Final season, the start of April, which does beckon all of these Cup Finals along the calendar. The Division 5 one that we have got to look forward to today in the Essex Sunday Corinthians Football League. We're at Parkside underneath the floodlights on a gorgeous Friday night and ready for some football. My good friend Sam Armitage does join me on this one. Sam, how excited are you for this? Yeah, I'm very ready, Lewis, mate. Um, looking forward to this one. Two sides who have, in all fairness, had some really good seasons. Second versus third in Division 5. Not much to separate either side. I think we're in for a pretty quality final today. Absolutely, and a few of the players that we're going to be keeping an eye out on. We were able to get the uh, team sheets just about 25 minutes ago or so. Jake Lee does start for Manford Way. 16 goals in 12 games in the league, 19 goals in all competitions. He's a player to look out for in the red and black stripes. We're in the number 10 today, as well as Jake Murner as well for Coppice Row. A hat-trick in the last round. Keeping his side in the competition, almost solo solo work from him. They beat Athletic Newham 3-2 from 2-1 down. In these cup finals, Sam, do you really need players to step up to the big occasion and really take it under, under their skin? Yeah, any of these guys can be the hero this evening. It's a one-off game, as is the case with every single cup game. So, you know, anything really can happen. Form goes out of the window. And yeah, anyone can score a hat-trick and become the hero, really, can't they? Absolutely. We saw that last round. Other players to look out for, Mergin Mark Hugh as well. For Coppice Road, the number 10. 15 goals in 15 games in the league. Charlie Moore as well, wearing the number 44 just on our screen here. So certainly going to be one to look out for. Let's quickly run through them size then. So Coppice Road in the orange and black. John Murner starts in goal. Toby Omotosho starts in that right back position with Mike Davies, Jordan Aymer, Jeffrey, and jo Jordan Santos completing what we will think will be a back four. Lou Barrigan, Adam Young, Jake Spearman to Jack Spearman too. And then, as we were just mentioning, Mergen Mark Hugh, Afo Olugbayo, and also Jake Murner, who will lead the line. As for Manford Way, well, Mitch Lucas starts in goal, 13 games played for him so far. This season, the goalkeeper, talking of goalkeepers, Rob Green starts in right back. Not the Rob Green that we know that's played for England in the past, but he is starting on that right-hand side. Tommy, Va Tommy Vaughan as and Charlie Porsett too. James Dunny, Callum Owen, Ollie Dossad, uh, Daniel Mooden, Herman Manzwa. Seven goals in seven games for him this season. Charlie Moore and Jake Lee leads the line. So... Plenty of faces on show. Anyone else that's possibly going to be catching your eye potentially today, Sam? Maybe Adam Young. He's got five assists so far this season as well. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, the number 66 at the back for uh, Coppish Row as well, Mike Davis. Eight games, five of them being starts, and he's got two goals as well. So a potential threat from the back when it comes to goal scoring. So this Coppish Row side, they... They, they have goals across the whole pitch. However, Manford Way haven't conceded yet in the Cup. So, you know, something's got to give, really, doesn't it? That's a very good point, isn't it? When you consider how well they have done to get into this stage, they beat May and Baker 6-0 in the quarterfinals, beat Royal Lions B in the semi-finals 2-0. We're just about ready to get underway. Our referee for this one is John Corn just going through his last pre-match checks under the floodlights on a Friday night at Averley FC at Parkside. Step two, ground this one. It'll be Coppice Road to get us underway going from left to right in this first half. Yeah, it's a decent ground as well. I mean, obviously, it's not been the best of weather uh, recently, but, you know, step two ground is obviously going to hold up pretty well. And yeah, as we get underway... On the nice 4G as well. So, certainly the ball is going to hold up quite a bit. As they're moving on this left-hand side, early doors, Coppice Row. Swung high in towards that penalty area. Manford can clear their lines. 
veered high up into the air to brought down there by Callum Owen and they can move inside here with Charlie Moore and he's being brought down there. This is in a really promising position. John Murner just setting up his wall. Suppose it's a bit of a difficult angle to possibly whip this in. We'll see what Callum Owen can try and produce with his pink boots on. Floated in towards that far post and it's met there as well. Oh, and just worked over the top. That was a good opportunity early doors for Manford Way. Yeah, I mean, the header at the... Well, the ball into the front post missed the header completely. And, you know, when it's in there, when it's in the box, it's a case of it can just come off of anyone. It can go anywhere. Luckily enough for Coppice Row, it hits, the, it hits their defender but doesn't go in the back of the net. They're going to have to defend this corner, though. Going to be the in-swing and delivery for Manford Wayne towards that near post. Dealt with at the first attempt. John Murner did come and try and claim that. Have the ball in his hand and take the throw on. In towards that penalty area now. Taken down nicely on the chest. Audacious trying to get the shot away on the turn. And this is promising now. With the long shot from distance, that would have been special. Yeah, I mean... The uh, number 26 there for uh, for Coppice Roy didn't really have many other options other than to go for the shot. He was left kind of on a one-on-two situation, but, you know, worth the try. And if that, if that goes in in the first 10 minutes of a cup final, there's headline stuff there. Coppice Roy trying to put this one in towards that penalty area. It's fallen towards Spearman, who can have a drive at goal, trying to create another hot bit of space. And there is a free kick again in a really, really, really promising position. 20, let's have to say 20 yards out. Perfect position for a right footer. Cobbis Road to try and take the lead in this one. Up and over, but over the top as well. Yeah, did have a bit of dip on it, but potentially say it was a little bit too close in for an up and over free kick like that. You've really got to get the whip on it. If you're going to find the back of the net there and ultimately just didn't have that much on it from uh, the Coppice Road midfielder. Just not the end product that it's needed. That's what all the game has lacked so far. Just that end product in the final third. We certainly know these two sides are very much capable of distributing that kind of ability. And they're trying to do so here. That one's just the wrong side of the post by Charlie Moore. That was very close to 1-0. Yeah, did really well just to cut inside on his right foot there. Still had a lot to do. Striking from just outside the box, but came so close to squeezing it in to John Murner's uh, near post. Oh, in switch of play out towards Wanzo. can cut inside and get the shot away on that left foot of his. Looked like John Murner had that covered, but possibly that could be the undoing for one of these sides. A shot from distance, John Murna. Well, if you're just joining us, WD Sports providing coverage of this Division 5 Cup Final. Nil-nil so far, 25 minutes played between Cobbis Row and Manford Way. There's complaints for a foul, but not given. And Cobbis Row are in behind. The opportunity to go 1-0 up in this Cup Final. What a save that is by Mitch Lucas. He's... Hasn't had anything to do really so far in this first half, but when he's been called upon, what a mighty save that is to keep the scoreline at 0 0. Yeah, an unbelievable save from Mitch Lucas. He's been instrumental in Manford Way's season so far between the sticks. One of the players goes into his book for a charge like that. Again, the long ball played forward. It's fallen all the way towards this far post. Chipped in there once again! Oh my word, Cobbis Road take the lead, but the flag is up on that far side, just when it was played back in towards that six yard box, and I think it was Mergen Marku that was just arriving, but just in an offside position it was deemed. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it was Marku who was given offside, or the man who received the ball on the, uh, on the left side to cross the ball in, uh, Ima Jeffrey. I think it's going to be that in-swing and delivery. Charlie Porsett is up from the back. Trying to make a nuisance of himself inside that six-yard box. In towards in two. And it was just the head of Callum Owen that just drifted it wide. 
You could be right in that one. <laughs> it's nearly the, nearly the case there. Just shy of 15 minutes to go in this first half. Still nil-nil. Cobbis Road with the ball in the back of the net, but deemed offside as Mwanza now floating that one in towards that near post. And John Rona goes down. He eventually gathers. Might have been a free kick. Yes, there certainly was a free kick in the middle. It's a nice convincing bit of goalkeeping there by John Murner, but he did enough. Yeah, I think uh, a few of the wingers and the fullbacks for Manfred Way have seen how he's dealt with some of these corners and the crosses into him. I think he'd maybe try and put a bit more pressure on him and ultimately, if you're going to challenge a keeper like that, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a free kick, but Again, I don't think it's too bad of a game plan. Again, it's going to be one of them long balls in towards that far post. Cleared initially. Decent flick out towards Green, trying to find it or to Mwanza. Oh. Nice feet there by Mwanza in towards the penalty area too, and it's gone all the way through Charlie Moore. Just a swing and a miss there, and oh, that's not a good clearance. There is Charlie Moore! Oh, rattles the post! And a good save as well by Myrna. Eventually cleared by Cobbis Road. Don't know how this scoreline is still nil nil. Off the post, and then has to force himself into a save at his near post. Still got more defending to do as Dossad puts this one in towards that penalty area. Oh, it's not being cleared properly. Yeah! And Manza finishes. Yeah! Manfred Way on the dying embers of this first half. Take the lead. And it was a player that we were saying was growing in confidence. Herman Wanza giving Manfred Way the lead in this game. Yeah, and again, the corner just isn't dealt with by Coppice Row. It's poor clearance and while well, this game's just especially the final five minutes or so of this half it's just been calling out for someone to just take the game by the scruff of its neck and Wanza has been that guy if it was going to be anyone it was going to be him as he dispatched into the bottom right corner. Coppice Row now with all the work to do and again a uh, cheap foul given away on the halfway line yeah it's the second time the uh push in the back has been penalized by referee john cord and the free kick's been taken quickly like i said they don't want this half to end charlie moore's delivery in towards that far post and john Murner was just able to get two strong fists to it wanza brought down again a cheap foul given away by coppice road they need this first half to end asap chance once again for Manfred Way to float one in towards the penalty area oh and it was nearly 2-0 we're going to need a new ball but that just fooled on the edge of the six yard box it's nearly 2-0 yeah, spectacular um, attempt Charlie Lee is just trying to orchestrate things because Quickly, try and force something now. Oh, I think Alug Bill has just felt his right hamstring there. He's just trying to plow on on Mitch Lucas. You can just see Alug Bill in a bit of discomfort with that right hamstring. Have to see if both sides will be forced into substitutions at half time. Lucas pumps that forward, and that is the end of the first half. In a first half which didn't really have too too many chances until Mergin Marku put the ball in the back of the net, but offside was given. And just before the break, it was Herman Wanza to give Manford Way the lead in this game.
And at half time in this Division 5 Cup final, Cobbis Row 0, Manford Way 1. More coverage to come in 15 minutes. Well, we're ready to kick things off. Manford Way, the side in the lead in black and red stripes. They're going to be kicking from left to right. Coppice Row in yellow top, black shorts, black socks. Ready to hopefully turn this one round. Manford Way haven't conceded yet in the Cup so far this season. And if they can keep that going for another 45 minutes, they'll be Cup champions. Referee John Count just uh, making sure everything is okay. And after a little bit of waiting, we're off for the second half. And there's Mwanza straight on the ball. We know how dangerous he can be after that first half. So it's ball back out to the right side. And uh, Robert Green swarmed by a couple of Coppice Row players. Just inside the centre circle. Clips it in towards the centre. It's dealt with headed away. But it'll trickle out for a throw into Coppice Row. And we're given the, uh, the long throw of Jordan Santos that we saw towards the back end of the first half. I think either would be, uh, would be enough for Coppice Row to get the ball into the box. And Jordan Santos trudges over to pick this one up and give Coppice Row the first chance of the half to put the ball into the box and maybe grab an equaliser. Santos just... Rolling the ball around his shirt, throws it in towards the six yard box. It's flicked on towards the back post and it's flicked into the back of the net. And well, two minutes into the second half, and Mergim Maku has scored. And they weren't going to deny him a second time, were they? One all here, and game on to the start of the second half. And it's all from that Jordan Santos throw, and we talked about it. In the first half, how that could really be the arch enemy for Manford Way. They didn't deal with it very well, and that's a real clever instinct there by Mergen Markew, just making himself a presence in the six-yard box. And we really do have a game on a game on our hands now, Sam. Well, you talk about a good way to a good time to score is before the end of the half, or probably an even better way to score is at the start of the second, because any as the chance goes flying in there, Ruff's going to give advantage and then pull it back. Any um, second half strategy to maybe hold on to a 1-0 is completely out of the window two minutes into the second half. It's only going to benefit Coppice Road because whatever was said in that changing room at halftime with Manford Way completely goes out the window now. You're back to square one. You've got to try and retake the lead. They do have an opportunity here with Jake Lee. Yeah, that left foot of his. They'll be wanting to bounce back immediately after being pegged back. And Jake Lee, we haven't seen much of him in the first half, but we know how dangerous he can be in front of goal. 19 in all competitions this season. He's going to step over around about 25 yards out from goal. It's one that's going to dip and it's dropped and it's a great reflex save from John Myrna to deny Callum Moore. And that's the second time this game that Callum Moore has been denied on what looked to be a, well, a, a, an almost easy tap-in by Speakman. Now oh, here they come again though. It's into the box now. It's been out to that far side. Pointers first touch is clipped into the box and the keeper came out to deal with and he managed to challenge uh, ones that there successfully and now Coppers Way have a chance to Coppers Way have a chance to hit it's struck right footed and it's a good save in the end from Mitch Lucas and a real end to end stuff here just past the hour mark it's still one all oh, what a save that is by Mitch Lucas and you saw his reaction as well so frustrated with his side that it was so easy to get in behind. Superb leg and it's a really, really great save. 
Santos with the results and throwing it. Just booming that one down the line. Fry goes down again. Referee is uh, undecided as to whether that was a foul or not. Doesn't give it. And now a chance for Manta to break. Clips one into the box. It's not dealt with at the back. And it's cleared away finally in the end. But again, some more shaky goalkeeping from Myrna. Here's Manta again. Another ball in towards the back post. But that one's gone through everybody. Dixon couldn't get on the end of it. And it'll go out play for a coppice row throw in. And... Well, here comes the throw from Vaughan into the box. It's taken down in there. Looking to play back. It's hit by Osher Lake, but that one is high, wide, and very not handsome. Again, it's going to be that long throw on. We've seen it so many times in this game. It's going to fall out to Wansa. Wansa wants to flick the ball out to Vaughan, and Vaughan just doesn't catch that well at all. Well, into added time. I'm for way now with a chance to throw this one into the box. The long throw into the six yard box. Well dealt with in the end by Coppice Row. Not, not the first time we've uh, had to say that today, though. And a loose pass. Though, and a chance on the break here for Coppice Row. It's 2 on 1 now if they can work it well. What's clipped into the back post? It's then flicked back. And the left footed volley. Oh! Goal fit to win any final! What a strike! And Coppers Law have come from behind! And it's Jack Speakman with the goal! Oh, come of the hour, come of the man! What a finish that is! Setting himself up on his left foot, cutting across it into that bottom right corner. No chance, Mitch Lucas. I said we needed a hero. Oh my word, what a goal! Absolutely incredible from Jack Speakman. He's going to take his time. I think the referee just paused the game for a bit. We'll reset things. I think the referee has blown his whistle. And has brought an end to this cup final. The celebrations, probably not as grand as they pro perhaps would have been if happened five minutes earlier. But nevertheless, Coppice Row have come from behind in this final to win two goals to one. And what a goal it was to win it. Well, Manford Way, they led at half time despite. Coppice Row having the ball in the back of the net. It was given offside against Bergen Maku. And in the end, Herman Mwanza put the side put the uh, put Manford Way 1-0 up at half time. That one goal lead was eradicated early in the second half by Mergin Maku. The offside flag didn't go up that time. And then as it looked like penalties were looming, an absolute wonder strike from Jack Speakman won the game and the cup for Coppice Row. Red cards from both sides. Uh, Abraham Shaw, the substitute, as well as Herman Wanza uh, on Manford Way's side. So the game ended 10 v 10, but regardless, the game has ended. Coppice Row 2, Manford Way 1, and Coppice Row are cup champions. Yeah, you've got to say we needed a moments of genius and it's got to be man of the match as well Jack Speakman for that strike alone absolutely gorgeous left footed volley into that bottom right corner what a finish it was a goal worthy of winning that trophy and yeah he's been lifted up by his teammates Definitely the man of the moment, and well, I mean, a, a sliding effort. I'm pretty sure that was all fun and games, but you can never, <laughs> you never know of everything that's been going on in the end. But you got to feel, regardless of the animosity between either side, being allowed to celebrate just on their own with no real um, instruction or.
early in the second half by Mergen Maku. The offside flag didn't go up that time. And then as it looked like penalties were looming, an absolute wonder strike from Jack Speakman won the game and the cup for Coppice Row. Red cards from both sides. Uh, Abraham Shaw, the substitute, as well as Herman Wanza uh, on Manford Way's side. So the game ended 10v10, but regardless, the game has ended. Coppice Row 2, Manford Way 1, and Coppice Row are cup champions. Yeah, you've got to say we needed a moment of genius, and it's got to be man of the match as well. Jack Speakman, for that strike alone, absolutely gorgeous left-footed volley into that bottom right corner. What a finish it was. A goal worthy of winning that trophy. And yeah, he's been lifted up by his teammates. Definitely the man of the moment. And, well, I mean, a, a sliding effort. I'm pretty sure that was all fun and games, but you can never, <laughs> you never know of everything that's been going on in the end. But, you got to feel, regardless of the animosity between either side, being allowed to celebrate, just on their own with no real um, obstruction or, you know, there's no Manford Way players trying to get involved. You can respect that, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, of course, Manford Way's focus will be very firmly on winning that Division 5 title now, as we were talking about earlier, only one point off of Royal Lions B with three games in hand as well. You'd have to say with how that three-horse race is going to pan out, they, they are arguably favourites with the position that they find themselves in, but they come unstuck today and it's that moment of brilliance from Jack Speakman, the hero of the hour. Incredible, incredible, incredible. We needed that moment, didn't we, Sam? We needed that moment in that game to really spark life into that second half. Credit to Coppers Row. Whatever was said, would love to have been a fly on the wall in that half-time dressing room. Whatever was said, it certainly motivated the Coppers Row players because... They look like a new bunch in that second half. Yeah, did not give Manford Way a sniff, but you could potentially also put that down to the injury issues that Manford Way uh, were struggling with in the second half. More obviously, having to come off, didn't return. Lai having to come off, and also, well, I mean, he did end up coming back on in the end. Owen as well, who had to be subbed off for a long period of time in that second half and he seemed to be dangerous in the centre. Dully as well having to come off so you know Coppice Row blessed by the fact that their side were probably a little bit fresher coming into this one not carrying as many knocks but regardless they had to work for the win and credit to them and yeah an unbelievable strike. Yeah absolutely. Trophy presentation to follow. I'm sure Jack Speakman will be the one that will be so pleased to get his winner's medal. When you consider also that Manford Way hadn't conceded a goal all the way up to this stage. Eight goals scored, none conceded. I'd have to say went into this as favourites. Again, Coppice Row, they're used to coming from behind in this competition to ultimately win. They did it in the semi-final, they've done it in the final. And just being presented with medals now.
And it will be the losing side. To gain their runners up medals in the end. And again credit to credit to either side, both both teams showing respect for each other after the final whistle. Yeah, absolutely. If it didn't have that little spur up at the end, we'd be talking about what a fantastic game it was. And it certainly was all the way up until that little moment. Thoroughly entertaining. Very, very good goal scored as well. A close contest as we expected. They just fall short, do Manford Way. Thought Manford Way were the better side in the first half, deserving of a lead. However, just the second half, their attack wasn't as dominant as we've seen. And what we said, what I said at the start of the game, they came out with such intensity and pressure, and it was always going to take a toll. And in the end, it showed as the champions. Get ready to receive their winners' medals. Yeah, you'd have to say as well their substitutes really did make a difference. Lewis Fry that came on in that left back position, really just that bit of fresh legs to try and prevent Wanza and Osher Lake driving forward. I know Kane Fry did get a yellow card for diving, but he was a pretty decent threat on that left hand side too, so clever substitutions and they certainly made an impact for Coppice Row Both sides just, I'll say both sides, Coppers Row, especially just receiving a few winner's medals. I think it was, well, there's Abraham Shaw, the man who got sent off in that little foray at the end, just receiving his winner's medal, and the wind kind of blows around Averly, and we'll hope that the, uh, the little thing there doesn't fly away i'm not sure what you call that <laughs> anyway it's going to be the the man of the moment speakman to lift the trophy coppice row are your division five essex alliance corinthian league cup winners how about that man jake speakman Definitely worthy of lifting the trophy. May not have been the captain, but is the man that won it for them. And they're going to go running off to their supporters as well. It's a Friday night. These celebrations won't turn here. It's only 10 o'clock. Tremendous stuff for Coppice Row. And we did say at the very beginning, I we were talking about how Manford Way, you know, they're in a better position. Uh, but possibly Coppice Row, this might give them just that, that momentum, that boost that they need. Yeah, well, a massive thank you to everyone who has joined us on WD Sports Live, bringing you coverage of this Essex Corinthian Sunday League Division 5 Cup Final the final score here as Coppice Row become champions the final score is Coppice Row 2 Manford Way run uh, Manford Way 1 <laughs>